Seekers, I'm Nick. Today we're checking out our first X670E board from MSI. It's the X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. But before we continue, make sure that you're actually subscribed to the channel because YouTube has been unsubbing people from our channel. They keep denying that it's happening, but it's it's real. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you get yourself subscribed because we've got lots of cool content coming. Anyway, we're checking out the X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. However, with these videos, ladies and gents, these videos are not reviews they're just overviews so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that's on the board and what physically comes in the box with a brand new motherboard so let's do a motherboard thing ladies and gents let's check out the msi mpg x670e carbon wi-fi but before we get started we need to get the motherboard out of the box so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this new board. Come on, mate, stop taking your time. Let's take a look, come on. All right, first up in that little box on top of the motherboard, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 6 on this motherboard. All right, what else we got going on here? All right, we've got some documentation. This is some pretty standard stuff, basically warning you that you know, batteries can be bad. There's the quick installation guide, which will actually teach you how to socket these new CPUs. We're gonna be covering this in a video as it is later. There's also a bunch of stickers to help you label your cables inside of your system. This is actually pretty handy. There's two SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives, if you decide to use them that is. There's also some RGB extension cables for different types of RGB. You've got addressable RGB as well as analog RGB. There's also some screws and clips for the M.2 slots on this board, which we'll be taking a look at in a moment as well as a USB stick with all the drivers and everything you need to get your system up and running, except the operating system. All right, let's unsheath the new board and take a bit of a closer look at this brand new board from MSI. We've got the front panel audio header. There's a four pin analog RGB header. There is also a TPM header and a bunch of other headers for things that you're probably not going to use, let's be honest. There's also two PWM fan headers. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like RGB controllers and liquid cools and that kind of stuff. There's a USB 3.2 front panel header. There's an RGB switch to turn all your lighting off. And then there's the front panel connector and everything to let you know your system is up and running and to turn your system on. On the right hand side of the board, there's another PWM fan header, a right angled USB 3.2 header, some SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rough drives. There's also a USB type C front panel connector as well as the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new X670E carbon Wi-Fi. There's a little LED array that'll help you with postcodes. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. And along the top of the board, we've got a postcode LED screen and four PWM fan headers for your liquid cooler pump or for your CPU fans and all that jazz. And on the top left of the board, there's two eight pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your brand new Ryzen 7 thousand CPU. A layout is quite interesting on this board. The top slot, which is the one to the left, is a full by 16 PCIe Gen 5 slot connected to the CPU. The second one down is a PCIe by 16 size by 8 slot that's connected to the CPU and the bottom slot is a by 4 PCIe Gen 4 slot. For the VRM layout, this board features an 18 plus 2 plus 1 phase duet rail power system with 90 amp power stages. And you can see that there is quite adequate cooling for that VRM layout with basically the entire IO cover being a heatsink and that huge heatsink at the top and both are connected via a heat pipe. Because this is an X670E board, it features AMD's brand new AIM5 socket or LGA1718 and I'm gonna show you guys how to open the socket if you've never seen this before. Basically what we're gonna do is push that lever down and push it towards the bottom of the board. Then you wanna lift the lid of the socket open and away we go. And inside the socket now, the CPUs don't have pins on them anymore like AM4. The pins are in the socket like you would find with Intel motherboards. If we flip the board over, you'll notice that there's not a lot going on here. However, there is one thing I wanted to mention that I've noticed after looking at all these boards quite a bit. The backplate is similar to the AM4 backplate. However, it is now permanently attached 
via the socket screws all the way through. So your backplate will no longer come out. For RAM, the board supports four DDR5 RAM modules with a total capacity of 128 gigs of RAM at 6600 mega transfers overclocked. This also supports both XMP and AMD Expo. Let's take the covers off the M.2 slot so we can take a bit of a look at what's going on here with storage. There's actually quite a lot of storage on this board. Also, I wanted to mention for the top heatsink, there's no screw. It just uses a little push clip to lift the heatsink off with this little nobule you can see here. All right, so in total, there's four M.2 slots that you're seeing. There's two PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots and two PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots. And as mentioned in other videos, or if you haven't seen it before, you can usually tell the difference between the slots with the keying, but with MSI boards, they actually go one step further than that, and they label the physical connection points to each of the M.2 slots. So you can see this one here is connected directly to the CPU via PCIe, which means it's PCIe Gen 5. For rear I.O., you've got a smart button, you've got a BIOS flashback button, and also a clear CMOS button. You've got a display port, you've got HDMI 2.1, a whole bunch of USB Type A. There's USB Type C as well. There's also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E, and 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and SPDIF output with an integrated I.O. shield. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed checking out the brand new MSI MPG X670E gaming Wi-Fi. Now, in terms of the rear I.O., I actually thought it was worth mentioning that I think this one is more chock-a-block than some other X670E boards. And regarding the audio interface on this, this has got a full interface. I kind of find it weird that the X670E Aorus Master doesn't. It's just perplexing to me. Maybe they will trying to save space and whatnot, but it just doesn't make sense to me. One thing I do think is actually kind of necessary for these boards going forward because they're getting more expensive and this is not to push up the prices of boards, but I think these boards need to start having 10 gigabit ethernet as standard because you're paying so much money for a board with only 2.5 gigabit ethernet and multi-gig switches in themselves are expensive. So why not just go the whole hog and give us 10 gigabit, right? It makes sense to me, especially for someone who's a content creator who's looking at this as a platform for their content creation PC, especially with the 7950X because it's got all of those cores and everything is really, really fast. One thing I've started to notice with these new AM5 boards is, yes, the cooler compatibility is technically compatible with AM4 to a degree. Now, I'm gonna recant something that I said in one of our other motherboard videos saying, oh, all the coolers should fit. But actually it's to do with the backplate I noticed. Most of these boards have the backplate permanently attached with the four screws around the socket. So yes, if you've got an AM4 cooler that can either clip onto stock mounting, you're good to go. As well as, let's say, an Acetec cooler that has the stock backplate that you screw the cooler mounting into the stock backplate, yes. But for some of the Noctua coolers that don't have that luxury, and for some of the other air coolers that don't have that luxury, I think that you will actually need to get an adapter kit. So, yeah, I'll take back what I said because I've had a lot more time looking at these boards now and that makes a bit more sense. I hope that makes sense to you as well. Which leads me into another thing. We've got a video planned with AM5 cooler compatibility, kind of like what we did when Older Lake came out. So make sure you're subscribed to see that when that drops. But in terms of the pricing for the MSI MPG X670E gaming Wi-Fi, you're looking at around 479 US dollars. 
and around eight hundred and fifty nine Aussie dollars. Oh man, AMD and MSI and all the other board partners, where are you getting these numbers from? It is absolutely bonkers. The price difference between, let's say, when X570 came out and X670 came out is, it's too much. No one can afford this stuff. It doesn't make sense to me. <sighs> Anywho, that's enough complaining about pricing. It's like this every single launch cycle, guys. So anyway, let's get on with our lives and you can get back to what you were doing before you are watching this video. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek and if you're watching this part of the video, today is our five year anniversary of being on YouTube. Yay.